Welcome to the Dirty Boys Power Washing Service. Patrick, it sounds like you've already started. Look, I'm just trying to clean up the dirt around here. Just trying to make sure you're ready for the, the big mission. Did you like a gnome? I've... Can you pick it up off of me? Yes, I can. I can. Alright, and I can put it... Th no, wait. It, it event... Hmm. Hold on, we'll put it on this table. <laughs> All right, well, that didn't work well. Okay. Uh, real quick, by the way, how are how are our levels? Uh, yeah, chat, let us, let us know. The Dirty Boys are back. Dirty Boys are in town. Uh, were we supposed to do this on Friday? Yes. Is Patrick's 10th uh, wedding, wedding anniversary today, and then tomorrow his wife is kidnapping him to Chicago to go to dinner and then to go see? No. Also, yes. Uh... Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you up just a scotch, Patrick. Mm. You don't want me to scream into my mic? Would that there wouldn't be a better solution? I don't think so. No. All right, that you should be a little boosted. Ah, well, ready to be boosted. How do how is how do we sound? Very excited to see Nope. Managed to not uh, get us. Spoil spoilers for Patrick on Nope. Nope. Yeah, keep away from me with those spoilers. Uh, Abomin uh, uh, Bill, is Battletech still on the menu? It is, I, I believe that. Yeah, we're uh, doing it tomorrow. Yeah, th that is Thursday, and then we'll be taking uh, Friday off, uh, I think. So, all right, last we... Uh, our last adventure with the oh, Dirty Boys no, Patrick, was... Oh, uh, yeah, that's because I adjusted your Discord. There we go. Oh. There we go. Should be good now. Jackson 99, well, in the space, in the time since the Dirty Boys last clean house, I got and beat this game. So I'm doubly excited for today. Can you tell me, Jackson 99, how weird does it get? How, how weird does this game get? Because I've heard, I've heard some things. I don't know, not specifics, but just that, like. What's the radial button, button menu, by the way? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Um, it is. I don't know. I'm gonna look it up. Uh, controls. So tab is to show dirt. Rotate. Uh, da, 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 da. Use washer. Left mountain. Left, left button. Equip E. Aim mode C. Is it E? That is your... Oh, yeah. Rotate nozzle. Select soap? No. What am I missing here? Oh no! Oh, you hold what? You hold one and two, and three. Uh, and that, okay. And that gets you. That gets you there. Uh, okay. I gotta reacquaint myself with the yeah, uh, the levels of of nozzles. Uh, so last we played, we uh. Boy, we really cleaned up a, a playground. Yeah, that that was a that was a big task. Um, maybe too big for the dirty boys. I forget how do I exit aim I'm mode. Gonna, I'm getting up, I'm getting up here. Let's climb. What's the aim mode button again? Uh, C, I think. No, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, perfect. Love it. All right. You know, this used to be my summer job, right? I mentioned this, the the washing golf carts thing. Yeah, you worked at a golf course. Yeah. I believe, I believe really you mentioned that before. Learned a lot about disliking rich people. 
not even rich, you know, but just like suburban petty bourgeois. Oh, just real well, golf bag. courses are where pe where uh, upper middle class people go to pretend they're rich. Yes, because a golf course makes you the aesthetic of a golf course suggests you are a person of means, and right. you've paid between forty to eighty dollars for the the pleasure to to feel that way. Yeah. And a big part of that means you can just do whatever you want to these golf carts. You're oh, not going to clean yeah, them. I bet. You're not going to clean them. There was a big controversy growing up with uh, uh, someone I gr uh, grew up with, one of my mom's best friend's sons, who flipped a golf cart in a, in a small town, and it, like, destroyed his reputation. Haunted him for years. Body. It seemed a little over overblown, but... It was a very small town. Not much happened. What on earth? Uh, let's see. Body. Oh, there's a little bit down here. Got that. What are we missing on the bottom? Oh, there we go. You got just... it. Nothing Yeah, the wheel on well. The, the wheel well. All right. Have you driven a golf cart out of the context of being on a golf course no I, I, it's delightful golf like there are it's it's wonderful i've heard some people say that like golf carts are underrated as like yes. a mobility solution for like uh neighborhoods as well um that like there's just a whole lot of errands that don't really require a car but make perfect sense for a golf cart yeah altier zeno says it's nice to drive a funny car I mean that's part of it. It is it is it is it is humorous and pleasing. Um, all right, do, so, we need, do you need to exit us from this to move on? To yeah, I'm about to start the new job. Uh, so the stream oh, okay. is saying the new job. Uh, Aura Smith and Jenny Pebbles at two one two Acacia in Muckingham. Cards on the table. We live at the old house of Esther Esther Daff. Oh, Esther Daff. Uh, the eccentric actress who played the Wicked Witch in that classic movie and vanished mysteriously in the National Park. We know all the rumors surrounding the place, but we also know we've picked up an absolute bargain. We don't mind if the furniture moves around a little. Uh, that's just next level feng shui. But the grubby exterior is really getting to us, and all the other power washers in town are too scared to set foot in our yard. If you could help us, we'd be eternally grateful. Hmm. This is a filthy house, Patrick. Let's oh, let's just get in. You know it. what? Well, that's only temporary. Things are only as filthy as uh, you allowed them to be. They're dirty oh, boys. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, what's the work order here? All right, yeah, we got we got a lot. Uh, do you want you want to start on the roof or should, yeah? Do you want, do you I did it last time. TV? I. This is just a bigger version of the other house we did. Well, that, we could that... upgrade our van. Yeah. Okay, I'm going up. Oh my god, hitting tab on this roof is Got just a, text. a nightmare. You might notice this odd, weird, creepy sign on the outside of the house. It's nothing to worry about. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, is it the, I'm choosing is it the, to ignore it. Wait. The one on the garage? Yeah, in the upper left-hand corner. Hmm. Did you see that? I do. Man, I don't know. This is not getting as clean as quickly as I might like. Maybe we need cleaning solution. You, you have wanted... The, the chat has dissuaded you many times from getting the soap. Well, you got it once, right? Right. And it was used up very very quickly on the, lot, it was. On the playground? It was. People said it's a money pit. But, like, we could get metal cleaner. Did we buy everything that we could after our last job? Uh, well, I mean... I think so. We've got, let's see, which, uh, we're on the Urban X2, uh, power washer, right? Think so? Yeah. And there we go. 
put on the extension. Yeah, I mean... Oh man, all my stuff was deselected. Rob, I, for, I know it was only... There was a chance that we were going to do this entire run without me realizing I was on the wrong equipment. Yeah, now we're... Because, because I'm joining your game. Well, it looks like so mine is... All right, now let's see how well this cleans. Oh, did you have the old equipment too? I feel like it, it certainly un unequipped my extension. Okay. Um, so yeah, now we're now we're cleaning this garage door. Got to really get that that sign off it. Well, hopefully you're not invoking some sort of spirit with the with the sign. No, I, I bet that stuff's all red herring. I forget, is the way to is there a way to rotate the nozzle so that like it goes vertical? R. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Perfect. Oh that's Oh, that's great. That is great. Yeah, it's especially critical, like, up here on the roof where you just... I'm just, I'm just at a very odd angle. They've been doing some chimney work. My neighbor next door. Extraordinarily loud noises. But I cannot figure out what they're doing. There was a giant silver pipe outside at one point. And then just... Just, just the loudest shit possible was something they were dropping down into the into the chimney. People I are saying they were putting new bricks on because they changed the regulations around here. Oh yeah, a little while ago, but it did not appear to be the case. What were the regulation changes? Of the height that the chimney has to be outside of the house uh we had a different issue come up and also i just didn't trust that the people it, it was just like it was it was due for the you know someone to just come out and just kind of service it in general and they right. found a couple of things inside that were a safety issue if we used the fireplace with any regularity uh and then they also pointed out that technically our chimney wasn't up to code and oh this was the kicker uh, it wasn't up to code when we bought the house, but if an inspector is not necessarily trained in uh, chimney codes. That's just that's different than your yeah. normal house inspector. And so that could have been something where we could have gotten them to knock whatever you know thousand dollars off of the down payment on the on the house. Uh, instead, they just got away with an out of a date chimney code, and the, and the and the people were like the the service people. Like, well, look, when you sell the house, there's a chance that you're going to get caught on this. And so we can either do the work or you can deal with it when you try and sell the house at some point in the future. And I was like, oh, fine, I'll just. You did not feel like trying it. to pass on the scam. Yeah, well, they were. I mean, given the fact that I didn't know you needed a separate chimney inspector and my real estate person didn't sure didn't mention that. Uh it is. I wouldn't be shocked if that is something that happens with some regularity. Yeah, I um. Fire code around chimneys has also changed so much since I was growing up. Like, in retrospect, my family's fireplace was like wildly not up to code. <laughs> Which meant it was good and cozy. That, I get the sense that most of them probably weren't. But, yeah, but the, but the thing is, like, it was also pretty much exactly what you want a fireplace to be, right? Like, the mantle right over it, like, easy uh -huh. to sort of gather around, and now every modern building, the mantle's, like, eight feet above the top of yes. the fireplace. Yes. Uh, it just looks like shit. You always gotta, you always gotta get behind the little, 
the little trim here. I also felt like... Did I get all the, the moss off the edge of this uh, gutter? Yeah, I think I did. Wait. Yeah, I think I did. A decent amount of moss in this. So our backyard is extremely swampy, is what I would call it. It makes it challenging to grow grass back there. It doesn't get a ton yeah. of sunlight, uh, except in very specific spots. And then the spots that it doesn't, just the grass gets weird. Like, I can't explain why there's moss here. Well, it's probably because it's just moist all the time. And it's a part of the yard that we don't really use, so I just ignore it, except for when I mow the lawn and then I'm reminded of the moss again. Moss is good, though. Is it? What does it, it do? Is it helping me? No, I just find... Isn't it you pretty? You just like the look of moss. Yeah, I love the look of moss. Okay, all right. I want my whole house just like covered in moss. Well, not the whole house, but you know. <laughs> uh, Zykus, Patrick has a, a bog for a backyard. Well, uh, 20 years ago, despite being in the suburbs of Chicago, not near a large body of water, uh, it was a flood risk. Um, and then, from what I'm told by some neighbors, who at one point, you know, if you've lived here like they have for, you know, 40 some odd years on the same street, uh, eventually they built some sort of giant hole uh, that's about, I think it's the one, there's one about half a mile from where we live. And that hole meant that you no longer had to get uh, flood insurance. But there are parts of the city um, where it'll be, it'll be like listed on the, you know, Redfin or whatever, you know, real estate place you're looking at that, that straight up says, like, oh, yeah, by the way, flood risk. You will need to get flood insurance for this house. Wait. So somebody's warning me. I'm making a mistake here. Uh, so soap seems to not work in the way you would want it to work. You would hope that you could just spray it into an area, and then the dirt there becomes easier to clean off. But no. Apparently, when you use the soap nozzle, it simply sprays a wide area, which will take off dirt, for materials you pray watching the soap you use uh, but everything in the super wide low intensity soap nozzle leaves behind remains just as hard to take off as before even though supposedly you just sprayed soap there uh, see I'm just I'm trying to be too realistic with this with this power wash simulator because yeah I would I was assuming that uh, it would be like kind of a you know you hit something with a cleaning agent it loosens a ton of stuff, and then water just blasts it all off. But that is not what's going on. So instead it's just combining the two? Like you're spraying the soap and the water at the same time, and it's just doing its thing? Yeah, but it's like... But once you're out of soap, it's not going to, like... Then you're just going to have to hit the uh, remaining dirt just as hard as you would have had to in the, in the first place? Right. Yeah, it's basically just like a supercharged version of your... Your spray for all of twenty-five seconds. Oh, I was stone cleaner. God damn it! Well, that wasn't worth it. Well, yeah, and each time you do that, you're putting us a step away from our us. Equipment. Yes. Hey, uh, I, I my business. Yourself. It's my business. You get paid either way. Your, your decisions have a trickle-down effect on all of us. Trickle-down Robonomics. Uh, the trickle-down is that I do what I want, and I, I get the <laughs> things I want, uh, and then we all benefit. Yeah, you know, when people listen to the podcast, uh, when it comes out later this week, they'll be able to find out uh, next week, if you bought a CRT. I don't think I'll do that. No, I, I, I use, you know, entrepreneurial podcast listeners will write in with some thoughts, and we'll see where we it's go from true. there. It's true, it's true. Now who's the petty bourgeois? <laughs> Ooh, there we 
go. Working at that golf course and cleaning golf carts is also when I became a smoker. Because it's like, there just wasn't enough to do until the golf carts came back. But right. you need to be around to turn them around so that there would be some available for the uh, arriving guests. But both, like for yep. three or four hours of that shift, uh, it was just like nothing to do but dwell on how badly my life was going that led me to this point. <laughs> and then, like a sign from God, someone abandoned a full pack of Marlboro Lights in a golf cart. <laughs> and uh, I was like. You know, let's 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 kill a few minutes and see how this is. And then I was like, "Oh God, yes, hell yes!" Even though this smells like a chemical fire, uh, it's amazing. It's my chemical fire. Yeah, I still I still think Marlboro Lights is some of the most acrid, disgusting cigarettes I've ever ever smoked. I got off those as quickly as possible. What were the What were the ones that we would we would? Uh... I've never really smoked other than uh, a handful of times when uh, extremely intoxicated uh, in college. And it was mostly as a bit. Uh, but we would smoke Lucky Strikes, which that, are... That was my brand. <laughs> which are... Uh, the unfiltered ones, right? They're, yeah, they're terrible. They're so bad. <laughs> that And that was why. It was why. Because you'd, you'd even get outside the bar, like we'd be drunk outside the bar having one and people are like is that a lucky strike yeah okay i don't want i actually don't want to bum a cigarette so okay there's a few things one that's uh -huh. one of the benefits is you get them all to yourself least because, likely uh, to be bummed uh two luckies are delicious uh -huh. um way way better draw way better taste uh than your typical filtered cigarette and, uh, yeah. No, highly, highly recommended. Um, oh my god, you alright, what? Hopefully that's everyone's takeaway from this stream! Wow, you know, I trust the waypoint, guys. Uh, guess I'll well, listen, to the, eventually you should stop. You know, don't, don't smoke luckies forever. But, you know... We won't set smoke up, kids. <laughs> uh, but they became hard to find. You started finding camel straights a lot more easily uh, than Lucky's. And then the, the downside was so few people smoked them that a lot of times where you did find places selling Lucky's, it was like the same pack had been there for like for, a year. For a year. Yeah. And so you'd be like, oh man, fresh, fresh pack here. And it was just like disgusting kindling uh real bad <laughs> but man when they were on they were on I will say the first time I had, uh, the first time I, I did light up a Lucky Strike, I was uh, in my car driving and I had to pull over so I could like almost retch because I just, I had only <laughs> smoked filtered before that. So I was just uh -huh. not prepared for like going to take a normal drag and immediately just like dealing with more nicotine and smoke than I ever had in my life. And I was like, this is horrible. Well, I, cr yeah, I crave so more immediately. My, my version of that was uh, when my dad passed, uh, he wasn't a big cigar smoker, but he liked them. It was like one of those things he enjoyed, especially when he was golfing or, at, you know, he wasn't a big drinker. And so, but he would have like a couple yeah. beers and then maybe one of those. And so, you know, we passed and then my brother was into them. I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Like, let's try this cigar thing for uh, a little while and see, see if it takes. And uh, the one of the first things I did after my dad passed was go on my honeymoon and and we were going in Hawaii and one of the places we stayed was at, in Maui with a uh, friend of my wife's and he is a cigar connoisseur and so one night we're in there and he asked like hey you know your wife said you know with your dad passing you wanted to try some cigars would you like to have one of one of mine and I was like 
Yeah, sure. I, you know, I gotta be honest, like, I don't know what, what I even, like, like, well, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a really good one. Well, what it turns out a really good one was, uh, was I didn't understand that, you know, cigars work much like alcohol does, in which there are, whatever is the equivalent of, like, the alcohol by volume, you know? Uh, yeah. Heavy and light, and, uh, I had one that on the first two puffs, I was like, wow, that's pretty, that's strong, but I don't really know how that's supposed to feel. And Rob, like, three puffs later, I stood up and was like, I'm going to die. Were you inhaling? I don't, uh, no, I knew how, I didn't, I didn't, no, I didn't treat it like weed. <laughs> uh, I knew how to smoke it. I just was unprepared for yes. the, the power level of, of the cigar. And I either should have not been smoking it or smoking it much slower. Um, but at that point, I was still getting used to the rhythm of keeping the cigar lit so that you're not, uh, you know, relighting it, uh, every, every five minutes. And I went to the, I excused myself to the bathroom, spent a solid five minutes in there, not getting sick, but doing everything in my power not to, uh, coming back, uh, and then just faking smoking the cigar and then politely declining the rest of it because it was just not going not going to happen. Oh my god. It was like profoundly embarrassing but also extremely instructive on okay, I need to do some research. And the research basically just led me to and this is after a couple of years of having them was just ask whatever the lightest one is because I, I don't like it that heavy. Yeah. Uh even if I'm having them with some regularity, which I don't really do anymore. I, I have maybe one or two a year at most. Uh, but it is still going to be the lightest c uh, cigar possible. Because uh, otherwise, it just does a number on... It doesn't get me drunk. It just messes up my stomach. Uh, and I, I have a really light stomach when it comes to, to certain things. Which is a, a fun thing I inherited from my mom. The homeowner keeps uh, thinking the house is haunted and keeps texting us about uh, how the house is rumbling and making odd noises. Uh... <laughs> yeah, someone mentioned trying to be a... Uh... Like a pipe smoker, and I also gave that a few shots because, like, pipe tobacco that can seems be intense. so delicious that... smelling. Yeah, but it's just it it's too much. Like it's the same problem of you're like, oh, this is kind of nice, and then five minutes later, you're like, your head is spinning. Yes, I mean it's the equivalent of you know like drinking shots, but you're just yeah. you're just inhaling them instead. Uh, and depending on how your body processes stuff like that, it's it can go poorly really quickly. I feel like since the last time we played, this th the game suddenly just giving it to me a lot more easily. Where it's like, hey, that's good enough, and then like, ching. Like there've been a few yeah, times where I feel like the skills. wall is not clean, and then it's just like it's clean. You may also just have a better sense of, like, how long you need to spray and, like, with what. And I'm sure the higher, uh, you know, equipment we're using is, is, is certainly helping in that regard. Yeah, that's that's probably a big part of it. But, like, yeah, no, the, the, I think, like, stream has to be seeing what I'm seeing, which is just, like, stuff is not clean, and the game is just, like, congrats. <laughs> Uh, the other memory that triggers because I said I went to Hawaii was so my dad passes six weeks before my wedding wildly inconvenient timing frankly I think my dad could have picked better timing on that front but practically speaking um, we didn't have that much money and my dad had all sorts of travel points and his whole thing was, you know, go to Hawaii and, you know, I'll just 
book you a bunch of hotels using my travel points and you don't have to worry about it. Like, that sounds awesome. Well, you know what my dad didn't do before he passed away was book us a bunch of hotels in Hawaii with his travel points, even though we'd already booked, you know, the flights. And I'm assuming the travel points do not inherit Oh, do they, they, so that's the first thing I looked into was like, can I just give, can I just move this over to my mom and then I'll just, I'll just do it myself. Um, and they, they do everything in their power to make that a giant pain in the ass. Um, like you have to pay cash in order to move it and yeah. like what they charge you for it basically means the points are irrelevant. Like it made it, they, they have processes in place probably for legal reasons, but there aren't any but regulations. But it's like planet that make fitness it levels of like making it just nightmarish. Yes, yes. Maybe there are scenarios where it makes sense, but it just didn't make any sense for uh, us. So, you know, my mom is still sorting through all the paperwork of my dad passing. She's not in a position to like offer us any money, and so we're kind of panicking on like how we're going to make this uh, work. And so my thought is. Well, my dad, this is, you know, well before an era of password management. I was like, I bet I can figure out some of these passwords. Um, and we hadn't filed any paperwork with the various companies. You have to file, like, you know, proof of death, yada, yada, if you're going to go through the process. Um, I think eventually they might get notified through various means so that what I'm about to describe doesn't happen. Um, but... Uh, in like one of my dad's notebooks, I managed to find some passwords, and my thought was, well, he must have certainly reused a bunch of these. Yeah. Uh, let's just start going through Hilton and a bunch of different ones, and we'll just we'll just see what happens. Uh, and sure enough, manages to pull up like three of these uh, that had a bunch like just a shitload of points attached to them, and I book a bunch of hotels in Hawaii for the dates we needed. I uh, had to book them under my dad's name, but then just put in the notes. It's like, hey, my son is going to, you know, be there first. Like, he's authorized to check in for me. Um, and I'd done this a bunch of times for my dad when I'd been on trips. So I knew that I knew that worked. Um, so I put that in. But in on some level, there's a little bit of, well, this could all go sideways. I guess if it goes sideways, I can explain what happened and hope someone takes pity on me. Uh, but so we fly out to Hawaii and the nicest hotel we stayed at, which is like some really nice resort on the west end of uh, Oahu. Uh, we show up and I tell my wife, well, look, I know this is awkward, but I don't think you should check in with me. Can you just hang out near the front? I'll check in. And once I've got the key, we're, you know, we're scot free. Like we don't have to worry about anything once I've got the key in hand. Um, nobody's going to give a shit. So she waits by the front. We're not telling them that we're uh, newlyweds. And I go in, explain, oh, hey, you know, you know, my father, here's his name. Here's a bunch of identifying information about him. Uh, I think I actually had an idea of his that I yeah. brought with. Uh, like, oh, great. Oh, actually, you know, your father is like such a repeat member. Uh, we're going to boost you to like, an even fancier suite upstairs. I was like, oh, that's, thank you. Oh, my father will be, he will be delighted uh, to hear this. Uh, I'll make sure and let him know. So they hand me the, the, the card and we go up and have this like wonderful private uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, suite that we got. And uh, no one was uh, none, none the wiser. I'm so glad those... there was no like sitcom levels of escalating like, Right, was I gonna have to like start crying on the spot and say like my dad died seven weeks ago? Give like give this to me? Like, are you gonna take this hotel room away from me? Like, I didn't want to do that, but I was I, I was willing to go the distance if I needed to. <laughs> no, we're, it worked out. It worked out very well. Or like the the house detective being like, uh, we have a policy about unregistered guests, and we're we're well, right, yeah, bringing that's... a young lady uh, in and out of here. I know. Uh, I mean, I figure, like, once you get in the, the... My whole thought was, once you're in the door, like, the staff doesn't care. Plausible yeah. deniability has been established. Which is why I brought, like, the ID and everything. It was like, this is going to give me everything I need to let someone, even if they were a little suspicious, go, well, whatever. My boss would understand why I said yes to this. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dave Provost, hello, this is Mr. Patrick's dad. I am here to check in now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about calling on the phone and pretending to be him. Uh, that felt like we were getting too too deep into fraud territory that I didn't uh, that I, I tried to just just roll with it. Yeah, it was it was real dangerous knowledge when I realized that uh, I could just call myself out of school. Oh, did you like, do that? Uh, as soon as like I was like fifteen, sixteen, and I realized that I could just be like. Uh, yes, hello, this is Mr. Zachney, and my son Robert Zachney will not be uh, in school today. Uh, he is he is ill. And that's all it took. Like they they're not they're not doing they're not pulling like wave files of what my dad sounds like. It was close enough and I spoke with authority. So they were just like, Yep, that is definitely that's that's a legit that is a legit call out. Um, wow. There were a couple times Do you I think did it still that. Works that way? I bet you things are too paranoid now to to make to pull that off. Um, but there were there were there were times I I called myself out of school like from the payphones uh, <laughs> by the back door where I was just like I'm not feeling this today. Can't, I mean, t- these days you could do this. that with a cell phone, in theory. You could be in school calling yourself out of school. Yeah. Siri trying to... I didn't get that. Siri, stop trying to narc on us. But, you know, oftentimes the stuff is really stressful, too. Like, you know... You go home... Your parents aren't supposed to come home that day uh, before school is out, but... You know, you're you're just terrified that like man, if they show up, I'm fucked. Spend the whole day thinking of a good story to tell for why you're there. Oh, it was half that. I just forgot to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what. Do, I mean, I guess is maybe like they have cell phones on file that like send a message when somebody is out for the day. The way it works for my kid in elementary school there's just a number you call and then leave a voicemail so that like that then like someone just goes through those in the in the morning but these are young kids so le- less likely as yeah no to. nobody cares what's happening to a teenager like you know i'm i'm going to i'm going to crazy eddie's comics like what do they give a shit about <laughs> i'll be fine Uh, DJ uh, Autom- uh, Atomica, were y'all allowed off school property during lunch breaks? We were. Uh, upperclassmen were. Okay, Freshmen I think that might have were not. I don't remember what. Yeah, it might have been. Was it upperclassmen? I mean, junior and senior? Yeah. Okay. That might have been the case for us. Of course, it didn't mean much if you didn't have a car. Or someone right. That's that's the car. thing. That that whole privilege like was basically supercharging the uh, social importance, the social rank of kids whose parents uh-huh. bought them cars. Uh, I did not have a car because I was walking distance to my school, and then it would just be a matter of like who was lucky enough to be in the chosen few to go in the car that you know your or one friend had or else you'd be just waiting for your taco bell to come back to to the school there was a mall you could walk to but it took basically the entire period to get there get your food come back that it sometimes didn't feel worth the effort no i uh yeah it was like you'd have to basically hustle down to the strip where the Pizza Hut was next to the Long Johns, uh, which nobody... You'd always get... you quickly get Is your meal at Long John's. anybody getting Long John's? No, Silvers? no. But that's that was what was nearest. Um, okay. The McDonald's was a little further away. Uh, that was basically only a drive through option. But, like, you could hoof it to Pizza Hut uh, if, if you really wanted. 
Yeah, the McDonald's was the closest thing. Unless you went to the mall, then you could get, you know, Sabaro and Panda Express and, and all that. And then, like, once I started getting in-school suspensions a lot, um, <laughs> I realized that, like, that was like a social club. Because then, like, you know, it's one of those things where actually everyone's a prisoner there, uh, including the, <laughs> like, chaperone, like, monitoring in-school suspension. Uh -huh. So it just turns into, hey, what do you want to get, Mrs. M? And she being like, I don't know, I could, I, I could really go for, uh, you know, something from the round the clock or something. Like, you, get, you can see, like, breakfast for lunch. And everyone's like, hell yeah, we do. <laughs> and so she'd be like, all right, uh... Josh, you got your car here with you today, right? Uh huh. Yep. All right. Here's some. Here's some money. Oh, um, that rules! Wow. Yeah. But then, like, of course, we'd play. We'd overplay her hand, and oh, like it, the place would turn into a zoo. And then she'd be like, "Okay, I try to be nice. Now I got to like. Now I got to be mean because you kids are taking advantage of me." And that would last about the rest of the day. Uh, and then the next day, it would start all over again. Uh, in. One of my Spanish classes that I had in middle school, uh, you know, as a substitute teacher comes in, so of course everyone is just acting like complete pricks. Just, oh yeah, it sounded like I, I, I look back and I'm like, wow, just miserable human beings treating a person in an awkward situation like, like shit, just on the worst possible behavior. And it was in a Spanish class, and. Someone had come in and claimed to tell us a bunch of swear words, and specifically oh, how to say like the equivalent of, of fuck in Spanish. And I was just like saying it like under their breath, like, oh, we're so cool that we're getting, oh, it's Spanish. He doesn't know what we're saying. And then like but finally halfway through, he's like, you understand that I know you're all just saying the F word. I'm choosing to ignore it. And if you would like to go into detention, you can just keep doing it. And the whole class stops dead in their traps thought they were being so cool and so calculated and these seventh graders just completely shook nobody expects a, a, a substitute teacher to actually know anything oh it seemed it was well, like a reasonable assumption even by uh you know dumbass uh middle school standards Uh, Jay Harkins, I never had a class be overly mean to subs, only subs that were wildly cruel. I don't think we were ever mean to the subs, or at least that's not my recollection. We were just unruly. It was just everyone was on their worst possible, like, goofball behavior. Just, like, yeah. not, like, listening. But I, I don't think we were. Well, I don't know. You'd have to ask those teachers. Maybe I'm not. My, my, my 37 year old recollections of it are maybe not, like, the best judge of the, the character of the class, but. I mostly think we were just being harmless idiots uh, and annoying. I never really had like an especially cruel uh, substitute teacher, though. I don't. I can't say that I've gotten experience with that. No, I didn't have no cruel substitutes. Uh, I did have one that. They kind of stopped using him as a sub because he kept <laughs> every, like, he clearly wanted to be a teacher, um, uh -huh. but, like, hadn't done the licensing stuff to do it, and probably would have been an okay teacher. He was a good lecturer. He was a fun guy to listen to. But the thing he really wanted to lecture on uh, was, of course, the evils of communism. And, uh, it's, and by the okay. way, like... You know, my town in Indiana was Republican as hell, so it wasn't really the content that got him in trouble. It was just more of it like, hey, uh, you know, that's not really what this class is about, is, like, you were there to present just the worksheets and the lessons for, uh, like, uh, quadratic equations, and everyone's just reporting that you're explaining how command economies are doomed to failure <laughs> because of uh, the fact that they empower lazy workers. So, ra so rather than just hand like pressing play in the VCR, handing out the worksheets and saying your teacher will be back tomorrow, they thought, no, this means being a sub means I get a classroom, yes. I get to teach what I want to teach for the. And the what these kids need to know 
is that uh, communism is good in theory, uh, but it has never worked in practice. That's incredible. And eventually it was just like, yeah, you gotta... You, you gotta actually just like present the coursework that's that's left for you. You gotta you gotta do that. Um, God, that is funny. There we go. Did it? Hang on, is this... Okay, wait, I'm nowhere near done on this porch. What if I... Why are you like this? Hold on, this is bullshit. Oh, wait, no, I am done. I am done. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Phew. Phew. Oh, man, just let me up this fucking ladder. I cannot get up this ladder. I keep... This is... Bunking up. Hmm. Do people who own power washing companies do they walk around in like X Files hazmat suits? Is that part of it? If you saw two people just spraying, <laughs> would I would be concerned. On the roof on somebody's house, would you have any thoughts on it? I would be a little bit worried. Yes. Sure. No, they walk and cut, walk around and cut off jorts. Have we been up on the high roof yet? No. I did. I did like one fourth of the roof and then got sad like the the roof just doesn't have any variety it's just a giant yeah, it's, space it's exhausting yeah so i was like i'll just i'll just get back to that and maybe that's something that we just tackle together uh how the fuck hold on here suburbia enough any house that looked like this would be condemned and not in like a homeowners association sort of way in like if it got this dirty, it tells you a lot about what's happening inside the house as well. Uh, you know, you would hope, but uh, when I lived in Wisconsin, I mean, it certainly depends on the neighborhood. That is that. Well, that I is. lived in a beautiful neighborhood, but the neighborhood was like kind of destroyed by a slumlord. Uh huh. Um, who like bought one big house with like a multifamily home, and. Uh, then just like let that thing run to shit and rented uh to whoever was like hard up enough to like rent from him uh and in the space of like two years uh you just watch that house and then the block kind of crumble uh where it was like it was like multiple it became like a housing complex for squirrels more than anything like like <laughs> one year good house like functional whatever a year later you look up the eaves of the house are basically swiss cheesed by like rodents who are living up there Ooh. and it's just like that's that seems like it's gonna be tough to fix indeed it was how, okay hold on how the fuck do i get on this roof that's the the real question No, but I could. But there was nowhere to put the ladder to uh, to get on the on the upper roof that I could see. You might just have to jump. Can you not jump? Might as well. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm up here now, Patrick. Ooh, get it. Believe in you. I'm almost done with the roof down here. Of course, that entire thing was happening like uh, in the in the wake of 2008. 
So, like, overnight, a bunch of houses just became vacant in that neighborhood. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the really frustrating thing about it, like, you can't leave homes vacant through one, much less two, Wisconsin winters. You really can't. Like, the, the home will, like, be horribly damaged uh, yep. by having gotten that cold um, and been left, left uninhabited. And so it was just, like, a real bummer because you just watch like this neighborhood, you know, in the space of a year, suddenly uh, a ton of the houses were basically no longer like homes. Um, right. And not just because the people have been just, like. They're just structures like, they, slowly falling apart. Yeah. Um, and it's like, well, we're not going to be able to fix this. Like, you know, whoever, whoever buys that next is going to be buying a rack. Um, but it was like, you know, it was very instructive, right? Because like the important thing was that if you couldn't pay the bank, the bank could kick you out of your home. Less important was whether or not that actually protected the investment the bank was on the hook for. Mm. You know, it was like, no, nah, we'll we'll just evict we'll just evict folks, and like, yeah, that home's going to be basically scrap value uh, in a year. But that's that is not our concern. But I do think, uh, memory serves, the, that Slumlord did eventually get handled by the fact that there were so many complaints and so many, uh, like, code violations that it, it was caught like, up with them eventually. Yeah. But, like, you know, it had to get real bad, right? So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it, it wasn't the system doesn't night, work because yeah. it, it yeah. kind of let things get to a absolute crisis point. We're almost done with this. Yeah, I moved to San Francisco in 2007, and I I moved before I graduated from, or like right after I graduated from college, but before my parents had like a graduation party with my family, so I had to fly back for that because Luke Smith, who now runs Destiny or is very high up at Bungie, you know, used to be the news editor there, that he left to go work at Bungie towards the end of Halo 3, I think? And um, they went up basically told me, you can have his job, but you need to move here immediately. I had planned to like spend the summer at home and then eventually figure out like what job I was going to get in San Francisco and that didn't work out, so I went out there immediately, came back, and it was wild. As the housing crisis was happening, I would come back to visit for holidays or whatever, and just, yep, there's just four new houses that are just taken by the bank. Um, I know, yeah. I like this, and this is not like it's like I know those people. They've lived there for a long time. These yep. are people that just bought a house. Uh, and, it, and still, like, the turnover, that's the most turnover I saw of that neighborhood in a year and a half than in 30 years of living there. Yep. Yeah, and then you, like, you know, there was supposed to be, uh, like, a homeowner protection, like, plan uh, in place, like, as part of the, the bailout. Uh -huh. um, there was supposed to be something that was largely, like, because there are a lot of people who were eligible... Uh, to keep their homes, even being upside down on their mortgages. Uh, but, like, the relief program uh, apparently was just, like, really half-assedly executed uh, in, like, sharp contrast to uh, the troubled asset relief program, uh, which was, you know, because that serves the banks, that thing, yep. you know, ran like a Swiss timepiece. Uh, and then when it came time to, like, can we keep people Ooh. in their homes? No. 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 No, <laughs> kind of want those back on the market, or not? But except the market's dead, so the bank will just sit on them, and eventually they'll accrue value just because they can also sell the land. Yeah, Ooh. heads up. Sometimes there's dirt hiding on this trim work. 
Uh, this one, there's a yeah, there's a couple of spots over here that just need. Hang on, somebody's telling me there's something on the horizon. I forget what's the uh, what's the zoom? No, that's not it. I thought there was a zoom. Hang on, what are we supposed to see here? Wait, this is bothering me. People are saying that something I should be seeing on the horizon, and I just don't. Window frame cleaned. Okay, there's this spot that still needs this, like, rim. It must be nearly done. I mean, you want to talk about the really eerie thing about being up here is that you can tell the homes a few streets over are facades. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, there is that. that. Now, what are we missing? Give us the... Let's look at the list. Okay, bricks, 12 of 13. Window, 7 of 8. Window frame, 7 of 8. Wooden trims, 10 of 21. Where are the bricks? Well, the brick is the base level of the house, right? So the gutters are done, right? Oh, I see, okay. I see. I see one of them. Okay, go along the house here. No! Fuck. There's trim on top of that garage we need to deal with. There we go. No! Oh, got the so last you brick. clean that shit. Oh, so the wooden spots alongside... Oh, this is filthy. It's underneath. So the wooden trims, you have to go underneath these ones that are like... Yeah, here we go. We dinging. We dinging now. Oh, yeah. I don't see them. Okay, is that all the wooden trims? 19 of 21. Which ones am I missing? Oh, wasn't there a way to... to mark this on your map? Like... Didn't people say there was a way to hi have them like get permanently highlighted in your interface? <sighs> I clicked on it, but now I'm not seeing it change. Railings, railings. But yeah, click on the list and highlight it. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, this is horrible. 
There we go. Are you seeing dirt up there? No, I was just like guessing because I can't get a good look up there. But it's like. Well, I'm confused at what. Uh, okay, so when you when you click escape and go to the the, the list. Yeah. So if you, apparently, if you click on it, it's supposed to highlight it, but I don't know what that means because I'm I'm not seeing. It materially change. Oh, I see. Okay, here's what? one. I got one. Oh, nice. Okay. Window cleared. Window frame, I bet. Okay, window frame. Now two wooden trims are left. Fuck, Rob, we forgot. What? Remember when you highlight it with your mouse? It shows in the upper left-hand corner. And you can see if there's anything left in the meter. We forgot about this because it was two weeks ago. So you're looking for something that says wooden trims, and then mm -hmm. that should be able to tell us. Now he's got to find where the wooden trims are. So I thought the wooden trims are what's, what's just alongside the bottom of the house. Maybe I just missed one? But it doesn't come up as, it just comes up as wood. Oh, no, it is wooden trim. I see. Okay, I was looking at the material. All right, so it has to be one of these on the long side of the bottom of the house. I must have just missed one to finish cleaning. And I think I got it. Boom. One more. And I got it. Nice. That's it. The dirty boys track again. All right, where are we off to next? All right, so. Wow, we were so efficient, though. We really cleaned the hell out of this house. Crushed it. All right, so. We got two weird ones, Patrick. Um, okay. The higher value one is clean the skate park, nine hundred dollars. Or you okay. clean the shoe house. It's a house shaped like a shoe. Yes, yeah, shoe house, shoe house, shoe house. All right, Martha Hubbard writes. Thank you so much for helping. Ain't you a sugar? As nice as it is, having our play school in the forest does leave it open to the elements, and the poor thing's now so murky it's starting to rub off on the children. In the old days, we'd fill a few buckets, and the children would do it themselves, top to bottom. Such fun, most of them came no harm. Nowadays, they're not even allowed to play on the roof, never mind down the gutter, and before the parents get all angsty. If you could please just come and give it a good wash down, that'd be just wonderful. Right. Oh, there was an old lady who lived in a shoe. I think that's actually the rhyme for her. There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. Why did I run to swallow the fly? Why there was an old lady hey, and fly. Do you remember why there's a scaffold? Did, did, did I say something about there being a scaffold? I don't know. I feel like the scaffold is just kind of a weird thing to be to, to have here. Is, is it to get to is the this a jump? The... Jump, 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 jump. Can you lay down the... Can I bring this up? With me? No, I can't. Yeah, the scaffold is there because the... Um, the ladders won't reach. So someone lives in this house? That's the story. Hmm.
friend, when they moved to Seattle, they lived in a... <clears throat> They're trying to figure out where to live. They Dirt like Detective Vision's up. just the heat map, right? People were asking if I'm using Bat Vision, but that's just tab. It brings up the quick flash, right? Yeah, you can't keep that up permanently, can you? Uh, so my friend who moves to Seattle, he uh, worked with his girlfriend and was looking for somewhere... He's like, maybe I want to live somewhere more interesting than just, I don't know. He was just, he was interested in doing something kind of different, kind of changing things up because of the, of the breakup and ended up living in a, in a boathouse, like off the, you know, yeah, off the coast in Seattle. And he's, he said it was like one of the coolest periods of his life. He just made sure to not take a shit on the boat. It's like the one thing that doesn't filter real good. It's a big, it's, it's a big pain in the ass to deal with. So he would just... Try, you can do everything else on the boat. You can cook. So wait, you just got you just got to go go ashore to shit. Try to try to go. I mean, you didn't have to. It was not a requirement. Um, but for whatever the just setup was on that particular house, it pulling was, up like a Viking, just the <laughs> just whatever restaurant is near the harbor. That's your uh, Lindisfarne. Oh hey, oh it's Patrick again. Hey Patrick, are you here for an appetizer? <laughs> Oh my god. But no, dude, I would be like houseboat time. I would I would go I would live that it houseboat life awesome. like a shot, just gone. Like I good enough for Sonny Crockett and Miami Vice, good enough for me. Although, maybe what I just really want is to live on a boat. It's a big old boat? Just like a tiny boat? A sailboat? A little sailboat. Like a, like a tiny little, uh... You know. Just a humble... Just a humble, like, 40 or 50 foot sailboat. I've never been on a boat. Neither have I, but I feel like... Never been on a cruise or anything, you know don't know anyone with i know people with boats you know like friends of my mom's okay martha all, hubbard just texted guys. us you got a stinky butt butt who said that that's the one we're working for you got a stinky butt butt wait you just got that message on your screen yeah i thought i thought it was you got a direct line to to nancy advice that she just asked me to say you got a stinky butt butt Oh no! Okay, ooh, I thought, man, it'd be cool if this game had dying from falls. Yeah, let's see if there's anything in the store. There's a new. We could get a power washer, but we just don't have the stars for it yet. That's a How shame. How many more stars do we need? Just four. Just four. But then we're also $1,000 short. So it probably requires finishing this job. Yeah. Uh. Oh wow, you can move the scaffolding like a ladder, huh? You can move the scaffolding? That's what people are saying. 
Or one person is saying that. <laughs> People are saying. Boots a little fussier than I was hoping. There's a lot uh, of satisfying. Like the, the, was kind of disappointing about the last uh, job was like, oh, here's just another house. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't anything really. Yeah, I mean that's about it. To be fair, uh, that's probably most is. the power washing industry. You know. Well, I get yeah. <laughs> sure, I guess if we're going for realism, then I. I, uh, I Martha, new texter, Martha. I want a yogurt tube. <laughs> what? I don't know, dude. I don't you know. Want a yogurt tube. Yeah, it's not spelled like how you think. Johnny bit me. <laughs> Robert, you like it? Are you and this lady? Uh... There's having a thing. It's like one of those things where you just want to get off this job as quickly as possible. I ate his yogurt. <laughs> what? What are we talking about uh, here, Martha? Okay. I want to go home. I want to go home. Just give her the yogurt. I will not. Have you, ever thought, have you ever thought about that? Maybe just give her the yogurt. Alright, time to move the scaffolding, I think. Is there seriously not a way to rotate the scaffolding? Oh yeah, there's wheel, mouse wheel, mouse wheel. Great. I need a little coffee. A little coffee break. You just keep watching, Patrick. Ooh, I'm on it. You gonna get coffee for me? No. But you can Ooh. you can you can hop in the van and uh, <laughs> I can give you some money and you get some. <laughs> well, I'll rob the substitute teacher. really filthy house it is like there's dirt and grime hiding everywhere I think she might have liked it this way Rob yeah I think I mean, I'm so kind of getting the impression this isn't something that she requested of her own volition maybe this is the family trying to you know they, they sense the housing market is right they can they can it's a seller's market 
They can, they can get someone to take this take this shoe house off their hands. Uh, new message from Martha. What'd she say? I'm going poop. Oh. <laughs> Did a kid get hold of this phone? That's gotta be it, right? I done it. <laughs> I done it. We're up. all saying. Cannot believe this. And all this is made possible by Waypoint Plus. Uh, <laughs> I done Hey, Rob. I done, I done it. it. Uh, Dave Provost, I got my first coffee grinder and pour over rig this week, and my first cup was on the weak side. What did I do wrong? Nothing. That's how that shit is. Listen. You know I fall down every rabbit hole presented to me, right? Like, this is known. Mm -hmm. I haven't gotten into pour over coffee. And it's because that process produces very delicate, very flavorful, nuanced cups of coffee that do not have the body and strength that uh, I associate with a good cup of coffee, so I just don't. Um, like, I mean, look, things you could do, you probably grind a little finder. Uh, you know, you could probably maybe turn up the heat. Like, my guess would be maybe turn up the heat a little bit, uh, give it like a certain degree or two Fahrenheit. Uh, but really, my experience doing pour over is that like it's a it makes a different kind of cup of coffee that you might discover is not for everyone. Um, I'm I'm pour over skeptic. Wow. Heard it here first, folks. There's anything quite justly it might spend he got too light a roast. That's that's possible. But like you know, I'm pretty I'm a, I'm a pretty simple, uh, unfancy person. I just I use the humble French press. Uh, you know, if I if I feel oh wow wow, all the haters just coming out, including Kato. I can't believe I checked in to hear that. simply haven't had good pour over i've had a lot of like ostensibly great pour over and i'm like at best i'm like this is nice yeah sure sure this is good that was definitely worth the 25 minutes it took to to bring it up <laughs> rob sounding more and more like patrick every day Kato barely even drinks hot coffee. Like, Kato makes a point of, like, I just love my cold brews and my little treats and, like, great, but, like, don't come at me being, like, and then I have strong, valid opinions about, like, hot, fresh-brewed coffee. Kato, you can make po cold pour over. As far as I can tell, that's the only kind. <laughs> you can tell a great cup of pour over uh, when it has come to room temperature uh, in the time it's taking you to brew. 
the coffee. Uh, Martha writes, so sorry about that. Charlie found my phone. Okay, there was a, there was a kid in play. Charlie, okay. Do we believe her? Or you think she's like covering? Yes. Oh shit. Oh. Sh oh. That heavy cigar hit me harder than I thought. Char Charlie got me. But yeah, no. My my, co my coffee equilibrium is uh, is the French press and the uh, and the Aero press and a decent burr grinder. Like, I'm content with my life. Yeah, I mean that would be my general takeaway from listening to you talk about things. Is that you're good. No, no notes. I mean, listen. Basically, if I'm going to, like, you know, sure, at some point I'm going to have a, hey, uh, hang on, Patrick? Yes. Were those garden gnomes always there? I think so. Okay. Yes. I don't think they followed us from the witch house. If that's what you're implying. Well, because I just remember I saw the first one out there in the tree line. Uh huh. And then uh, now there's. At least I two. think so. I think we're fine. But it's yeah, also it's... possible they've been encroaching upon us, and I, uh, I haven't noticed. Oh, the mocha pot. The mocha pot's cool. Stovetop espresso is a lot of fun, um, but not for someone with an attention deficit issue. Oh, that's how I'm going to have to get that. Okay. I do like some of these levels that actually force you to... Yeah, Mocha Pot's just ladder. a percolator, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, I was confused. Is, isn't a Mocha Pot a percolator? Or is it also like a different espresso thing? But you you like the ladders, Patrick? Yeah, well, like, there's, there's some spots on this level where like, yeah. you just can't get it. Like, you gotta use the angles on the... I think to a degree, like, I think where I've come, at, come down with a lot of coffee, too, is it's like, which ritual do you prefer, really, is, is the big question. Is like, sure. which the physical is ritual about, like, is the most morning, fun? Right? Yeah. There's almost like kind of an, uh, I don't know, maybe a ASMR is the wrong way of putting it, but there is something about just what are the, the actions you like taking that are pleasing as you arrive at the conclusion of caffeine in your body all right so the mocha pot just looks like a maybe i don't know what a mocha pot is maybe i'm thinking of something else i thought i thought like stovetop the thing was just the thing okay well hold on riley joe i i enjoy the click of putting a pot in a keurig there's limits that's not <laughs> there are rituals and then there are foul incantations uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I am anti-Keurig. It's also, like, you know, bad environmental option. Yeah. But on our vacation, there was a Keurig in the place we were renting, which I guess makes sense for, like, a, you know, a thing you're renting uh, online. And I will admit I was charmed by j just being able to put it in and hit. Oh, I mean, look, go. I'm not going to lie. Like, when, uh, yeah, when we're in a place with a Keurig, sometimes it's, like, well, here's a decision that's taken out of my hands. Yeah. Y yes. Yes. 
One hundred percent. Oh, you dirty, dirty little spot. Hold on. Hold on here. All right, Patrick. Mm -hmm. There we go. Let's see. No, don't want this here. There we go. All right, so my goal that I have to defend is this opening in the scaffolding. Huh? You have to defend uh, the gap between these two picnic benches. I have to defend? What yep. You what do you... What do you... What? Goal! <laughs> Wait, I can't see the soccer ball. You can't see the soccer ball? No, the objects don't have permanence on the other end. That's bullshit. I had to look so at you, the stream you, to see what... You okay, can't hold even... Alright, so, oh, you, so right, you can shit. see it on the stream. Okay. Okay, hold on. Point, point at it, but don't... Stop, stop shooting it. I'm not shooting it. Okay, so it's resting right in front of... So it's like... Yep. Can you see me pushing it? You did push it, but now you stopped. I can't see it. It's not there. Oh, huge dub. Epic. Um, so can you see me walking around with this gnome? It's right in front of your face. Yes. You can? Yes. Oh. So it's just but the can you see ball. me holding the, the gnome? Yeah, I guess it's just the soccer ball. All right, can you see me? Okay, so can you see me pushing the soccer ball? No. What a weird little quirk of this game. Oh, right. I can't reach. What is left to do here? Patrick, uh, while you work on that, I'm going to read some of these comments. Uh-huh. All right, people are dragging uh, Dunkin' Coffee, which is true. Yeah, but it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's like it is. Yeah. But there are people like, you know, it's ubiquitous quick coffee, and by those standards, it's decent. Some people like the the harshness of it. Um, I mean, sometimes I'm in the mood, by the way. Sometimes, like, traveling, especially like, a long road trip, you suddenly discover that, like, Oh wow, like in a certain mindset, this terrible coffee is exactly what I need. Yeah, 100%. I agree. Me pick this equipment up. Okay, so somebody says, uh, my friend is an international barista competition contender. He makes all his uh, non-espresso with a V60 pour-over. Making the best coffee isn't about making the most advanced, complicated ritual. And yet the V60, I feel, is the thing that people get as they're like, I'm going to get a really, I'm going to, time to start working on a big old ritual. <laughs> well, what is preventing us from getting this wall? Patrick, do you have a guiding principle for garage organization? Uh, no, because I haven't gotten to that point yet. Like, for example, I have a shed now, but right. my shed is not organized. It's just a pile of all the stuff that was in the garage. I have done the research on, like, the compatible pieces that can go into the shed that will give it shelving and... Uh, that's like more of a fall project uh, yeah. that I have for myself, but no. Well, this is how, when it came up when we last talked about the 
me looking at other people's garages. Like, that's, I need to figure out that part. Like, what is this garage going to look like? Um, I mean, I have part of it figured out. We have a, we have a, a treadmill in there. Yeah. We have a TV in there. That TV gets less use now because that was primarily like a, like a COVID thing. So you can watch football on Sundays and have the garage open and not worrying so much about, or at least worrying less about transmission. What else do we got? Oh, this boot wall, done. Uh, window frames, seven of nine. So there are two window frames that still need to be cleaned. I cannot believe it, but this game needs a lean. What does that leave us at? Boot walls, 16 of 19. So a couple of these boot walls have a little bit of... This one must... Oh, that one's down. Boot wall, boot wall, boot wall, boot wall, boot wall. Boot wall, boot wall, boot wall. Hmm. Oh, this one. That one's done. Oop, this one. So I will say, if I ever get a big off, big fuck off suburban home, uh huh, I am putting a monstrous espresso maker on there. That like I do, I will not. Well, I know how to use it. I want to be clear. No, I will never know how to use it. But that's the point. But that's the point. Is I'll just be like, it's like a little grown out hobby horse. Uh, or busy box, um, and I'll just be like, it's got, you know, valves and cranks and wands, and every cup of coffee I make will just taste like ass. Every single one. <laughs> like, hey Patrick, you want me to want me to make you a quick latte? And you'll want to say no, but you'll look in my eyes and and you'll have to say yes. Uh, and it will be horrible. I'll be like, I'm still working out my method. Rob, have you been in this house for five years? Shh. Shh. It's the study of a lifetime, Patrick. Wooden trim clean, door frame clean. Does that leave only a couple things? Uh, one window <laughs> and one window frame. Rob, it better have a direct hookup to the hard water from your pipes so that it clogs immediately uh, with mineral deposits. Oh, you bet it will. <laughs> you bet it will. <laughs> oh, this is the window. Okay. Oh, please, I'm not getting a McMansion. I would never. It would be an authentic mansion. All right, one window frame, Rob. What are we missing? What the fuck? This is... Not that one. Not that one. That one. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. The underside of this little fucker. That one. Yeah! I found you, you bastard! Water problems in a house really spook me. We've never really had them. We don't have a basement, and basements where like a lot of the water issues start and finish in a home. Not that it's exclusive to a, a basement, but that's where. God, my mom and her unfinished basement it was mostly just a storage unit for stuff, and she had some issues with it a couple of years back, and it's just 
she got the family friend family and friends discount because the the people who were doing it were a friend of me growing up and it still costs like sixteen thousand dollars yeah that's not like yeah that's that is the nice thing about like the condo is like a good starter home because a lot of home stuff can't actually happen here um it does give you a sense of the flow of things like maintenance and like what to watch out for uh yeah, I didn't. I know never owned a condo, and so I I went right off the the deep end on on that one. And knock on IKEA wood, we haven't had anything horribly major go wrong. So, Patrick, yeah. uh, are we done for the day? It's five. The skate park's big. Options. There's the skate park's nine hundred dollars. Forest. Can we clean Cottage. the vintage park? The vintage car. Can we yeah, call? It, we, can we do yeah. that and call it there. Yep, Aura Smith writes, we're settled into Esther's house now, and it's so much fun. Every day brings a fresh dose of the paranormal. This morning, Jenny found a blob of syrup on her pancake that just looked like Thirsty Roger from Sister Sister. We set up an Esther vlog, and people are loving her. Anyway, we found this old car under under some tarpaulin at the back of the garage and wondered if you thought it was worth running your jet over. Yeah, all right. Wait, hold on. Oh, look, it says wash me. Is that a ghost? Classic. Did a ghost write this? There's dog prints on top of the car. Rob, I think this storyline is going to go places. I'm, like, most interested in following this particular storyline. Yeah. Uh, and someone's uh, posting this car restoration uh, video on their vlog right away, <laughs> according to the... Aura Smith is beginning to suspect this is not a worthless heap. Ooh, you really got to get into the cracks on this one. This uh, the, the orange one is not going to suffice on some of these little spots. Oh, we're gonna have to do rust remover. That's what, yeah, dude. You got to use like the red targeted one, because you don't have to do as much on the houses. Clean that hub camp. Okay, the metal cleaner works on the rusted metal hold on oh, yeah yes like hit like just just goose it and watch what happens well i don't think i can buy anything oh can you can and you I... access it in the inventory um no Well, just trust me. It's it's impressive. <laughs> I do trust you. It wouldn't shock me if for like a job like this where it's like a very dense uh a lot of rust that it would make that you know that the the soap would come maybe come in handy for this specifically. Yeah. Although I do wonder if. Hmm. No, it is. Oh no, I'm out of metal cleaner. Don't start pricing us out of our upgrades. Just because now you've gotten obsessed with metal cleaner. Okay, it's possible that the metal cleaner is not much more efficient than the high pressure wash. Ah, chat strikes again.
turns out this car was not his last film, driving me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can't believe that this is a little, little foretaste, a little preview of immortality we're getting here. <laughs> That comes out before the end of the month, right? Yeah. Soonish. Come on. Get clean, you. Yeah, there we go. Oh, man, I hated washing the car. I actually I hated a bunch very of much chores. growing up. I don't. I don't know why. I I had a lot of. There was a lot of uh, doing laundry, a lot of cleaning bathrooms, a lot of washing the car, and then some mowing. Man, I, the fuck I do my parents do? Honestly, lawn, mowing the lawn was like that was always a thing I did. Make sure to get Rose's handprint off the back window. <laughs> Mr. Carlito, they should add a car wash mode to Gran Turismo. Yeah, actually. That's the thing. I also, like, I gave up on car washes, basically. Like, once I moved out to Boston, it's just, like, street parking everywhere all the time. I'm like, who gives a shit? This thing's just going to be rusted and scratched and chipped to, to hell, like, immediately. So the only reason I still use them is because they, at least out here, like, the cheaper ones where you're not going to, it's not going to do a lot for your car, but, you know, it'll, it'll clean it up for, you know, $10 or so. Uh, but then you get access to their big vacuums. Uh, and especially for the kids, I mean, I have a hand vac, but it's not the same as basically like this giant tornado that right. I can just shove around the car. And so that once a month is worth the, the $10. I'm not, you know, if it were, if I had a car that was just mine, I thought I would keep it clean. My future Camaro will be well loved. There are a couple of people written in and been like, I don't know if you want that Camaro, buddy. They are hard to see to out live, of. Live your truth, Rob. Don't don't let people stop you. Well, uh, the truth I'm living is that <laughs> you require a lot of uh, uh, unaffordable debt. Well, welcome to me trying to figure out how to how to buy a car in this market, and then just, Better, I, just turn, I just turn want the phone. nice things now, and I want to deal with them later. You know what I mean? Like, just give uh -huh. me nice thing now, give. Yep. Uh, and eventually, I'll pay for it. I mean, that just makes sense. Still dirty on this mud guard. Espresso machine in the Camaro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this game needs lean. Oh, this is all part of the mud guard. I see. That's why. Alright, so it'll be on the other Dude, side. Dude, this this car is filthy. I mean, it's looking pretty hot right now. Ooh. Like, 
couple more dings to go. There are times where prone isn't enough. I wish I could get even lower. Yeah, yeah. No, like, exactly. Give me some Ant Man tech. Like, let me, let me get under there. All right, this mud guard. I think this is our last thing. Let me check them in. Oh, canopy hinges, door, door hinges. Three out of four headlights. Which one don't we have enough? Oh. Tire? Right? Ah, uh, windscreen. What's the windscreen? Got it. Wing mirrors. That's a shelf. Shelf? What's the shelf? Shelf? Is it this cargo thing? Oh, wait. I just. Oh, no. I don't. I got it to highlight. Oh, is the underside. Uh-huh. Uh, the mud guard, which is basically like, you know, this like big thing that stretches along the whole thing. There must just be like, we only need a tiny bit more. I don't know where I'm missing. There it is. All right, two door hinges. Oh, I see. I see one of them. Oh. Oh, there's the canopy hinge. There's not the door hinge. It's the door hinge. Headlight. Jesus Christ. This headlight situation is... You and I have both hit these headlights repeatedly, right? I thought so. Can't see anything that's... Folks, I promise we are not forgetting dirt vision. I know there's not there's nothing to be seen. Yeah, I mean Rob, I would say remember to use the bar in the upper left. That will tell you the one that has a little bit of white. So you've got this see, this is the headlight over here. Got it. Okay. So I got that. But now tell me where the fucking door hinges are. <laughs> So I highlighted it, and that does make something go white, uh, like flash white, but I don't see any of the dirt. Why is it just a tiny bit up above? Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, all right, well. <laughs> Uh, 
I am sorry everyone had to see that. Uh, we try to have a safe stream here. Um, but occasionally, uh, you know, them dirty boys just get carried away. They love a, they love a job well done. All right, so Patrick, that does it for you this week, right? When you're you're punching uh, the clock, and you're no, I do have stuff to do tomorrow morning. Do you? I, th yeah, I got to do the newsletter. I got to try and finish the draft. We busy. We had we did a podcast that we did. Yeah. I mean, it's been a, a packed three days. Yes. Uh, stream yes. Delvin Ring all day Monday. Did a did the podcast or no? I did yeah. Did the podcast in the morning. Had actual work to do in the afternoon. Did a podcast this morning. Then stream this afternoon. So I've, I've had no days off, just like Bill Belichick always told me. Yeah. Uh, but exactly, I way. will take a day and a half off. I'm, I will, I'll be gone Thursday afternoon and Friday. Excellent. Uh, I think Ren and I are going to be streaming some Battletech tomorrow afternoon. Um, and that will probably do it for us on streams this week. And then uh, next week, Motorsports Monday. Get back yep, to it. Turns. Get back on the Oberhof racing grind. A um, whole, whole bunch of things to look forward to. Uh, all of this made possible by Waypoint Plus, uh, which now lets you listen to the podcast ad-free. Find out more at waypointplus.com. Uh, and if you want a uh, piece of merchandise or art or like a vessel uh, to, to enjoy our streams with, there's waypointgeneralstore.com. Uh, that's got you covered. Uh, that'll do it for the Dirty Boys today. Uh, we're, we're clocking out, and we'll see you again tomorrow with more Battletech. Uh, Till then, peace. 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 Can't get out. It's going to let me pull up OBS at some point. Peace.